get a cup of coffee, get a strong cup of coffee if you need to. I want to bring some information. It's amazing to me, but we have a headline news coming right out of the Washington Post. Scientists, scientists claim they have found the elusive planet X, planet X. Doubting though, doubting astronomers are in an uproar. Scientists say they have, they have found the elusive planet X or Nubiru or dwarf star or planet 7X. But, uh, but man, this is crazy. And what's amazing about this, I did a video, what, last week? I just showed some footage that somebody said that they might have shot from the North Pole and it looked like this big moon or planet or I don't know what it was. And I said, I don't know what it is. I just threw it up on YouTube to let people at least keep the dialogue going, keep the discussion going. Because you're dealing with, and then you're dealing with something that NASA researched it, put teams of scientists on it from 1959 to 1992 and then never spoke about it again and yet there are books and i mean is is here's the thing i'd love to hear what uh gil Brazard thinks about it right now i mean he has probably been the leading expert among astronomers in the world on this and so for the and what are the odds that last night i get a picture of two sons over indonesia it was an extraordinary looking picture. I thought, well, let's just put it up there. I don't know if this thing is photoshopped. If it is, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. If it isn't, is it a sun dog? I know what those are. Doesn't look like a sun dog. Looks like something else. Is it some type of reflection off the lens or is there something out there? Now, listen to this, folks. Here's the question. Planet X, Nubiru, is it a myth or a mystery? That's the big question. And you don't have to get upset on either one of them because here I do have scripture. I know what's coming on the earth in Revelation tells us it's going to get hit with a mountain burning like a lamp. It's going to kill a third of the fish, destroy a third of the uh, ships in the sea and kill a third of the people on the planet. It's not a question if there isn't going to be a deep, deep impact. But something's got to cause it. Something has to throw a mountain that big. It's got to be a, a big asteroid, comet, or the debris from something mega, mega, mega monstrous, okay? Is, it the, is Planet X the destroyer? Is it, will it bring wormwood? Now, here's what the Bible says. I'm going to read this, I'm going to read this report, uh, the, what the scientists are saying, just one moment. But I want you to know these scriptures so that you're not just saying, Begley, stick to the Bible. I am! That's what I'm doing. You, it's just you don't hear many preachers will even talk about it because they, they just don't know what to do with it. Jesus said it. Here's what he said in Luke 21, talking about signs of the end times. Jesus said these words in verse 10. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. That's what it says. What does that mean? Well, I don't know. I don't want to talk about that. But I don't, I don't either. But something great, fearful in the heavens will be visible. Now, uh, same chapter. Just slip on down. Uh, to verse 25, listen to this. And there shall be signs in the sun. Signs in the sun. And in the moon. And in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. And men's hearts failing them for fear. For looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. What in the world can shake the heavens? These are the words of Jesus Christ. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Wow, we're going to talk about this in our live broadcast. Starts at 12 noon Eastern today. You don't want to miss this broadcast. Here's what it says in the Washington Post. Scientists claim 
uh, they found the elusive planet X. It's a big, dark presence at the furthest reaches of our solar system. It's mysterious force, powerful enough to skew the paths of planets in orbit, and yet so subtle that it slips undetected past even the most powerful telescopes on the Earth. For centuries, it's eluded some of the most brilliant minds in astronomy. Some say it even destroyed one. It's the subject of endless calculations and rampant speculation, crackpot theories, and countless hours spent gazing fruitlessly at the night sky. It's known as Planet X. Nibiru, the dwarf star, Planet 7X. Well, um, on Tuesday, a group of astronomers said they found not just one such presence, but two of them. What? Are you serious? <laughs> it's bad enough to hear about one, but two? Wait a minute. The ALMA discovers the most distant object of the solar system. Read the title of one pager uploaded to the research sharing site. The, uh, here's what it says. Using a large millimeter ATRA camera and a sub-milliliter array, it's known as ALMA camera, a powerful telescope located in the highest deserts of Chile. The researchers say they have come across two extremely large objects skimming through the outskirts of the solar system. What? Are you serious? Um, though both studies were submitted to the prestigious Journal of Astronomy and Astrophysicists, neither has been pre-reviewed or formally published. Steps that are par for the course with any kind of serious scientific research, but especially when pronounced uh, pronouncements of previously unknown planets are at stake. They're both based on limited observations, just two spottings apiece for each odd object. And even after just 48 hours online, they have garnered a great deal of skepticism within the astronomy community. That's what I'm saying. And the astronomer Gil Brazard, who I think is probably one of the leading uh, minds in this, who has studied ancient um, documentation and sightings in the heavens going back about uh, 4,000 years. It, and, and these are Chinese documents, uh, uh, documents from Europe, and they match biblical events like Hezekiah's sundial going back 10 degrees, like the sun staying up all night for Joshua during a battle, like the sign that Jonah saw during the days of the preaching of Nineveh and others. They match these events. The, da the data that's been recorded by people who have nothing to do with the Bible, their dates match the dates historically recorded in the Bible. So Gil Bazar believes that something helped create those signs and that could have been the passing of this Planet X. Or is there two planets? Maybe there's a Planet X and a Nubaru. I mean, are you serious? So. You're looking at a preacher. I'm just a preacher of the gospel. Here's what I know. There's going to be great signs in the heavens. I'm not going to argue if it's, if it's planet X or what it is. I'm going to tell you there's going to be great signs in the heavens and fearful sights. And I'm going to tell you also there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and distress among nations with perplexity or confusion. And men's hearts are going to fail them for fear for things coming on the earth. So in other words, we're going to discover something that's going to cause men to fall dead. Uh, for things coming up, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Well, what's going to shake the heavens? Well, we know God's doing it, but what's he using to do it? Because he always uses something. I mean, even the Red Sea didn't part, just, just didn't just part. It, the Bible even says there came a strong east wind. I mean, God uses science, uses nature, and his perfect timing prophetically for everything that he does. 
We're going to talk about this day in our live broadcast. You don't want to dare miss this show. It starts at 12 noon Eastern. Get there now. Hurry. And I'll see you at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. Are you serious? Showtime. Are you serious? Get a cup of coffee. Calm down. Is Planet X in the Bible? Grab a Bible right now. I'll be in Job chapter 38. And I want to share something with you. Why did God say what he said to Job? Well, we have an actual uh, information, an actual article from 1983 from the Washington Post says that two NASA scientists did discover Planet X in 1983. Of course, when the leading scientist in NASA on Planet X uh, team died, NASA's never spoke about it again since 1992. And now this past Friday, the Washington Post again has broken news that in the mountains of Chile with a superpower infrared telescopes, their scientists there have found not one, but two planets and they're on the edge of the solar, uh, right on the edge of our solar system. Well, now, quickly, I want the reason why I bring this up. In 1983, the two NASA scientists that found Planet X, their names were Nugenbauer and Hawk. Now, uh, they said these words, quote, a heavenly body, possibly as large as the giant planet Jupiter, and possibly so close to Earth that it would be part of this solar system has been found in the direction of the constellation Orion by an orbiting telescope uh, aboard the Infrared Astronomical Satellite or IRAS. Are you serious? It is a, it's, they officially announced it. NASA has found a planet. They called it Planet X. 30 years later, you know the technology is much better. And now our, uh, the scientists have found two planets in Orion. Well, and, and here's the deal. It's in the constellation Orion. Now, the reason why I say, is it in the Bible? You'll need to go with me to Job 38. And then you'll need to go with me to Revelation 8. And this is why I asked the question, is Planet X in the Bible. Uh, is that what, why did the, the Lord give an explanation? See, Job was challenging God. Job was challenging God about, you know, you know, because of his family dying and his, and all the things happening, you know, and he had boils on his body and, and everything he owned was stolen. And his wife had even said, look, why are you still praising God? And Job started questioning God, just saying, Joe, God, help me understand this. And God basically said, if you read the 38th chapter of the book of Job, he basically says, where were you when I laid the foundation of the world? Where were you when I was walking on the bottom of the ocean? Where were you? Do you understand how it rains? Do you understand? I mean, so God just really goes through this whole thing. I am God. And matter of fact, God gives us a clue. He says in Job 38, 31, he says, to Job, God says, Canest thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Orion? Why would God say, loose the bands of Orion? Let it go. God is saying, listen, Job, can you reach up and just loose the bands of Orion and let everything fly? No, you can't, Job. Why are you questioning me? That's what God is saying. And what are the odds, folks, 4,000 years later, that scientists with a satellite in the sky with infrared telescope looks deep, deep, deep into the outer darkness of space and looks into the constellation of Orion and sees a planet. Is God giving us a clue that he is going to loose the bands of Orion? Because if he does, he sets everything into motion. And if that's the case, is that why Jesus said in Luke 21, verse 25, For there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity, seeing the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things coming upon the earth. They're going to die of heart attacks because of something coming. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Why? Is it because God loosed the bands of Orion? 
And when this happens, folks, then shall you see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, you don't have to go cry for the rocks and mountains to hide you from the face of the Lord. If you're saved, look up! Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Now go with me to Revelation 8 because now the Lord may have given us one more clue. And uh, in Revelation chapter 8, there's a bunch of seals that have to be broken. We understand that. But in Revelation 8, look what it says in verse 8. Revelation 8, 8. And the second angel sounded as it were a great mountain burning with fire. It was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And a third part of the creatures which were in the sea had life, died. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. And a third angel then sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the, of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, or bitter. Radi radioactivity, radiation. And many men died in the waters because they were made bitter. Any Anytime a comet or asteroid or something comes from the, the sky and hits the earth, it always brings with it a lot of radiation. My question is, Job, was God giving us a clue when he mentioned loosening the bands of Orion? And what are the odds that Planet X and maybe Planet Nubiru, there's two there now, maybe that's what they are. And maybe one and the other hit, Revelation says two, one like a mountain, one like a burning lamp. Are you saved? I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And I'm just asking a question. Just look at, take a look at Orion. Think about it. Are you saved? Give your life to Jesus Christ. He is coming soon. I'm going to ask Mike around the world a little bit about this, but I really want to dig into this question with Gil Brizard on Thursday. But Mike from around the world will be with us today. Are you serious?